Am I on? <laughs> I'm sure Flo is smiling wherever she is. 
thanks again uh, on behalf of Mac and Lisa and the family and Flo's grandchildren and all of us who miss her so much. Uh, thank you for being here at this very tender time. So we're here to celebrate together the life of this beautiful woman and to be here and support beyond today, uh, Mac and uh, her daughter, Flo's daughter and grandkids and son-in-law. And we're here to support one another too because you all know and love Flowey. I say no in the present tense because you know, when we love someone, it never goes away, does it? It's always right here. The person is always right here. So uh, we want to remember, remember today the legacy that uh, Joe left in each of your lives. Joe, Flo. <laughs> you know I didn't mean it. Flo left a legacy in my life, although I didn't know her as long as most of you. But today, uh, let's all recall those moments with Flo, as uh, you saw in the PowerPoint presentation. Happy moments, happy moments. So Flo, uh, and her last name is precious to her, her maiden name. You know that, right? And you cannot mistake the pronunciation or you'll be in trouble with her. <laughs> Florence Louise MacDonnell Esri, Esri. Born August 16th, 1945 and went on to her next dimension of life on November 9th of this year. Survived by her spouse Mackie Esri her daughter Lisa Bartlett and Lisa's family, Ray Figueroa and their children, Isabella and Dylan, and those of us who are here. I like to have us, as I do on Sunday mornings, share a sign of the love that lives in us with one another to feel a real sense of community together. And so I'm going to share a reading from a book called How Then Shall We Live. It was by uh, Wayne Muller. So here's something he said about times like this. Being in community with others is an inescapable part of a full and meaningful life together. Gathering to observe ritual, ceremony, festival, birth and death. These are the ways we remember the th rhythm of things and the triumph of the human spirit and the deepening of our lives together. And so when we ache to be held in the comforting presence of God, when we grieve, when we choose to celebrate the sacredness of life, we sit together like this. We pass the kiss of peace, we hold one another's hands in prayer, and we remember our love in the company of the family of God. And so in the spirit of remembering our love, would you take a moment to greet the people around you? You can shake hands, give them a hug, whatever, but do it now. I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Let's say a prayer. Lord of life and font of love and source of all that is good and beautiful. We join together, we sit together today, we share together today in remembrance of all of the gifts that Flo Esri brought into each of our lives. We give thanks right now that you comfort the hearts of her beloved Mackie, her amazing spouse, her beautiful daughter Lisa, and 
their beautiful family of which Flo is so proud. We give thanks that you bless this time, reminding us of the preciousness of life and the fragility of it, so that we live out the rest of our days with a sense of purpose and meaning, with a sense of the importance of loving one another. And so I pray this knowing that it's unfolding in and through each and for all of us. And we all say, Amen. I hope you all got a bulletin, did you? There's a lovely story of Flo in here as well as a beautiful picture. It's my place, I guess, to uh, talk a bit about what Flo believed in and why she joined this church and stayed here uh, because of the way we look at life in unity. It's a gift. And in unity, we talk about, as many others do, that there is no end to life. You know, when we lay down the body as Flo has, she was done with it. When we, do, when we lay down this body, it's not the end of the life of our soul. I always like to quote Jesus, who, when the disciples were pretty uh, sad that he was leaving them, at least that his body was, he, he said, listen, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because I'm going on to prepare a place for you that where I am, all of the good that that Christ presence is, is there waiting. And so I think it's important to know that for Flo, that there was a place prepared for her and that the, the walk of her soul into that place was joyful and blissful. That has been the ongoing promise of those who have uh, crossed almost to the other side but have come back. They affirm and promise that it's, it's an experience of peace and uh, oceanic love. Now the challenge is for all of those who are still here to remember again the preciousness of life, the gift we've been given, and to live it in full gratitude and appreciation. Lisa, Flo's daughter, is going to share the eulogy with you. And so I ask you, as Lisa comes on up here, to send your love and support. Mom would want us to celebrate her life today and not to be sad that she's gone. So that's what I'm going to try to do today, and hopefully you will too. Mom was many things, a mom, a wife, and a friend to a lot. She'd be happy to see everyone here today. Growing up, she instilled in me a really good work ethic, which I carry today and I'm grateful for. But she also knew that when work was done, she knew how to have fun and enjoy her family and her friends. I have a lot of great memories of really fun family vacations, visiting family up in Canada, which she loved to do, going to Disney in Florida many times, and camping at Wyman's Beach. And anyone who knew her knew how much she really loved to dance. <laughs> she once told me recently that she didn't think she was a very good mother, and I completely disagree. She worked hard so that I could have things that all the kids wanted, even though we probably couldn't afford it. Everything on my Christmas list was always fulfilled. I can remember her one year helping me make a Halloween costume of a scarecrow with real hay, which was a big thing back in the city. And uh, no surprise, I won a prize. <laughs> she had a lot of love in her life. She loved her grandchildren. When I adopted Dylan from Kazakhstan, 
we arrived at the airport at like one in the morning and she made sure she was there in the airport. Um, anyone who knows her knows how much she hated to drive to the airport. <laughs> so that was pretty big. She also loved watching Isabella in all her, her school performances and she was so proud. <laughs> She loved all of you, all of her friends with her heart. And of course, she loved her great partner in life, Mackie, someone for whom I will always be grateful. I'm so glad she had you, Mackie, for all these years. Though we feel the weight of sorrow in our hearts, let us also carry the light of her love. In the midst of our grief, let us find solace in the fact that Flo lives on in the love that we share, the values we uphold, and the memories that we cherish. And as we say our goodbyes, let us not dwell on the loss, but rather celebrate a life well lived. Flo may no longer be with us in the physical sense, but her spirit lives on in the friendships she formed, the laughter of her grandchildren, the warmth of family gatherings, and the enduring love that binds us all together. Rest in peace, Mom. You will be missed. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. That was uh, well spoken. It's always uh, good to remember stories. And I want to give uh, you all a chance to share a memory of Flo, if you'd like, as, as a way of celebrating her life and uh, at least get it, begin to get in the process of letting go. So the one I'm going to share to uh, begin is uh, Flo loved my dog, Cleopatra. And Cleopatra loved Flo. And one of the reasons she loved Flo was because Flo would sneak food to her. <laughs> Mag tried to stop that, but forget about it. Uh, it was Sunday, Sunday luncheons we had, and uh, so Cleo was always, you know, on the knee or hiding, hiding by her chair, and Flo would. And her laugh was infectious, wasn't it? Yeah, it was her laugh. So it's your turn. Anyone would like to share a, a memory of Flo? Don't make me call on you. <laughs> I didn't spend a whole lot of time with Flo except here at church, but um, when I first came to church, she was one of the first people that I met and I sat and visited with her over at Fellowship, and I just really enjoyed her personality and her sense of humor. She was just such a lovely woman, and she will be truly missed. Yeah, thank you, Eileen. My problem is I cry very easily. <laughs> um, I've known Flo for... <laughs> For many years, and uh, my best memories are when they came to Hawaii. If you saw the pictures up there, we, we did everything. Uh, she was such a sport. Um, we did scuba diving, zip lining. Mac rented a, a black Mustang. We drove around with the top down. And, it was just, and she just loved all of that. Um, then she got this brilliant idea one time that we should go do karaoke at a... <laughs> at a restaurant down on Bell. And we did that for a while. <laughs> we weren't very good, but <laughs> we were sports, you know, and she was always a sport. And she, there was nothing she wouldn't try. There was nothing she wouldn't do. She was, <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. She passed that on to Lisa as well. There's nothing Lisa won't try <laughs> and has. Anyone else? Uh, 
of Frank. So one day I was uh, walking behind Flo and she was, <laughs> had one of those days where she couldn't move very fast. So I said to her, Flo, either lead or follow, but get the heck out of the way. <laughs> she turned around and hugged me and said, hi, Frank. <laughs> she knew it was you. <laughs> Thank you. Who else? Um, I remember first coming here um, to this church for the first time, and Mackie and Flo would sit in the back, and she was just so welcoming and friendly and kind, very warm hearted. Um, I felt very welcomed here when I came. Oh, thank you, thank you. She did that with everyone. <laughs> well, it's been quite a while since I first met Be uh, Flo. Um, she came from Canada, I come from England, so we used to have a lot of talks about things like that. And uh, I, I, I just, Loved her. Every time she saw me, she'd say, "Hi, friend. No. Hi, friend." Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, PJ. Anyone else? Oh, good. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> and the son-in-law. And you know, it's funny because when I first met Lisa, and I met Flo, you know, when you meet the uh, when you meet the, the, the mother of your girlfriend, you're thinking, ah, <laughs> you know. But it was, it was interesting because I, I thought she was so loving. But I, I have to tell you, after talking more with Lisa about Flo, I said to her, I said to her you know what, I, I need to know who this lady is, what she's about. I, I, I said, I need to know who this lady is and what she's all about. But what, what's really interesting is Lisa, one time, she says to me, okay, so we're going to go ahead and do something. And she says, I'm going to guess you don't want to go, you know, my mom, this, that, right? The old stereotype kind of attitude, you know, why would you do something with her mom? No. I looked at her and I said, no, that's not how I work. In fact, my mother was my hero. So I said, no, I want to go. <laughs> I said, let's go, I'm with you. And I think from that point forward, spending so much time with Flo, uh, you know, anything we did, anything that we could do together, uh, it was so rewarding. But even, even other things, such as not just going to lunch or dinner or something like that, but we'd go camping. And Flo and Mackie would drive up there. And it was great, you know. So her adventurism, it was always there. Um, I'll tell you something. She made an impression on my life. She made an impression on our lives, my family, really loves her, um, we're going to miss her. We're going to miss her terribly. Mm. Thanks. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. Anyone else? Are you sure? <laughs> Back. I'm coming. You know, um, Flo would be so stinking happy to see all of you. There are faces here today that I haven't seen in a long time. All of you are here for Flo. I can remember when she first started coming to this church because Mac fell in love with her. And I think that's, that's where we started to meet Flo and get to know her because of how much Mac loved her. It was a little tense at first, but I'm sure the other Reverend Sharon before you was watching. <laughs> Bible study one morning, she said it all straight. You know, we love Joe, we love Mac, and we're going to love Flo. And I think that set such a tone for this church, a tone of love, acceptance. Flo brought it all home to us about what real love is and about real friends. And look at all these real friends here today. Flo would be touched. I'm touched to see a lot of you that we don't see very often. 
So Flo, Mac, you had the best. Lucky gal, lucky Flo, lucky us for knowing her. Yeah, thanks JD, thank you. <laughs> okay. It was just her laugh, that was it. That's all you needed to hear. Yeah, <laughs> true. Come toward me. When I first came to this church, that's when I met Mac and Flo, and everything everybody said is the same, you know, her laugh and everything. And I saw them all the time out in Sun City, you know, concerts and stuff like that, and always got a hug from both of them. And I just, I love them both, and I'm gonna miss her too. Thank you. Thank you. Flo, just sing me a spot in the choir. I was going to say, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> I really got to know Flo um, when she was part of the choir and um, she was always a bright, shining light in the choir. And she had a lovely voice. I don't know what she didn't think so, but she had a really lovely voice. And I always appreciated that. And she was so supportive. I mean, um, when I first came here, I was so um, taken aback because the person I had to replace uh, was one of my idols, and I had no idea she was the music director before me, and if I'd have known that, I might not have applied. <laughs> but um, Flo was just always there to support me and tell me how great things were, oh. even when I didn't think they were. And I'll never forget, I had this job playing in um, Scottsdale at this restaurant, and Flo and Mac came all the way out to Scottsdale to support me there. And I'll never forget that. That was awesome. Thank you. Thanks. There will be a reception in the activities hall after this, so I hope all of you can be there and share some more stories, some more lovely stories, and um, give some love to Mac and Lisa and Flo's granddaughter and Ray, and one another, and one another. There's a poem that I like to... Uh, read at a time like this. And it's not so much for you, Flo, it's mostly for all of us here still. I read of a woman who stood to speak at the memorial of a friend. She referred to the dates on the tombstone from beginning to end. She noted that first came the date of birth and spoke the following date with tears. But she said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For the dash represents all the time that she spent alive on earth. And now only those who loved her know how much that little dash is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live in love and how we spend our dash. So think about it long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could just show, slow down enough to consider what's true and real, and always try to understand the way other people feel, and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more, and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before if we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? 
And uh, we're all proud of the way Flo spent her dash, laughing, adventuring, loving, being a good friend, a loving spouse, a good mom to her cats. She spoiled them rotten. Life is so fragile, and so, uh, so as we all go back into our lives, I want to hold in my heart, and I hope that you hold in yours, that life is for this moment, and it's to love one another and love the life we've been given. So Mackie has requested, is it your favorite song by Daniel Neymar? If this is my last song. So we'll play it now. No? Oh, the bagpipe, sorry. If this is my last song, if this is my final day, if tomorrow I'll be gone, what do I want to say? If this is my last song, if it's my time to go, when my body's moved on. What will I have to show? No, not fortune or fame They scatter to the wind The things that make a name Just don't matter in the end But is the world a little more peaceful? Oceans and sky, a little more blue Is humankind a little bit wiser About the good that we can do? Does the sun shine a little bit brighter Where before there was only rain? If so, then I'm glad If 
are my last words for all of the earth to hear. If all that I have ever been is about to disappear, if these are my last words, there's nothing that I need to say. I have only tried to serve. It's never been about talking anyway. So much hurt there is to heal. It's hard to understand. All I can hope to feel is that I am doing what I can. Is the world a little more peaceful? Oceans and sky, a little more blue. Is humankind a little bit wiser about the good that we can do? Does the sun shine a little bit brighter where before there was only rain? If so, then I'm glad. Given hope to the hopeless Has a hungry soul been fed? Has a child stood a little bit tall Cause of something that I said? Have I left a little kindness? Have I eased a little pain? If so, then I'm glad For that, I'm so glad I came. If this is my last song, what do I leave behind? What do I pass on if I am? An important message. I know Flow Spirit is here with us. Probably right behind you, Mackie, saying, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be watching you. <laughs> <laughs> and Isabel, I know that she'll be at every performance you're ever in. And that Lisa, she'll be bringing those sails to your door with ease. And for all of you uh, to know that she's just a thought away. And the more uh, we share the love and gratitude we have for her, the more we feel in our own heart and can give away. So I believe she would want us to, uh, to go on and live as happy as we can, doing all the good we can while we can. Mackie wanted to uh, close with something that is very precious to Flo, birds singing. Huh? Their, uh, their backyard, I know you've, most of you have been there, is a, a bird sanctuary. It's wonderful to see, and Flo loved watching them. And so as, uh, as we walk out, um, I hope that you'll join us over there to continue. Thank you, uh, Molly and team, and Melvin and team. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. The birds. <laughs>